Last month, Russian hackers got access to over a billion online accounts. This is just the latest reminder that passwords are broken. And they are broken not only because hackers are sophisticated, but also because we, as humans, are just not up for taking ridiculous precautions to maintain our security. A solution to this problem, we are told, is biometrics. So your face, your iris, your fingerprints, or even the geometry of your hand, they can all be used to biometrically authenticate you. And this technology has come a long way. Your iPhone can now read your fingerprint. And we have iris at a distance systems that can pick up your iris from more than a meter away and in less than a second. We are also looking at new biometric modalities. Scientists around the world are now trying to use your electrocardiogram for biometric authentication. About 10 years ago, I came across a medical report written by a cardiologist which spoke about the uniqueness of a human electrocardiogram for every person. This report would say that the ECG tends to look so different from one person to the next that it is sometimes difficult to establish universal diagnostic standards. While these news may have been distressing for cardiologists, for me, as a biometric scientist, it presented an interesting opportunity to explore the very same property for biometric authentication. Ten years and more than a thousand subjects later, we have established the ECG as a biometric modality. And in fact, this technology is now making its way into some really exciting consumer electronic products. But what makes ECG biometric systems work are the exact same factors that make the ECG signal unique for every person. So imagine the exact size of your heart, the orientation of your heart in your thorax, the activation order, or even the conductivity of the various areas of your heart. All of these factors contribute to the production of a signal that has unique characteristics for every person. Sometimes the differences are not clear by naked eye, and we require intense machine learning to extract them. But they are always there, and we can always measure them. Of course, the challenges with ECG biometric systems are the cardiac conditions that a person can develop, as well as the changes to the physiological status of the human body. We have concentrated our efforts to the design of systems that will continue to function even under such conditions. We studied the ECG under physical stress, and we have concluded that while the heart rate may affect the frequency of the pulses, it does not affect the biometric attributes which we can still measure. We have designed systems that can automatically detect cardiac conditions and respond so that patients can be verified. But the million-dollar question is, are biometrics secure? Well, if you have seen a Mission Impossible or a James Bond movie lately, you are probably under the impression that biometrics offer 100% foolproof security. Unfortunately, this is far away from reality. Biometrics are about probabilities. They are not about certainty. Any two fingerprint images of the same exact finger will always have differences. A bad orientation of your finger on the scanner, a very dry skin or very damp skin, they all contribute to the production of an image that will be difficult to match against your biometric information. So practically, this means that James Bond cannot simply grab his gun and have his palm print authenticated a split second before he shoots. And it also means that a terrorist in random light conditions cannot be identified with 100% accuracy using CCTV cameras. What biometrics can tell us is that there is a chance that the person is who we think he is. That's all they can tell us. And it is up to us to decide how much chance we should tolerate before we activate a gun or apprehend a suspect. On the other hand, Passwords are deterministic. You either have the right password or you don't have it. There is no middle ground. 
But the argument for biometrics is that they are convenient to use, and they are harder to steal. And for this reason, I believe that they will continue to penetrate our lives. And we may even see more exotic forms. So beyond your fingerprint, we may use for authentication your lip print, or your tongue print, or the pattern of your nose pores, or even the shape of your ear. We may even hone in on the unique audio signatures that your body produces. The human ear produces autoacoustic emissions. That's right, the human ear does not only sense sound, but it can also produce sound. This sound is involuntarily generated by the cochlea in the inner ear. So in the coming years, don't be surprised if we have managed to embed tiny microphones into earphones so that your music player only unlocks in your ears. And we may even see hybrid systems, systems that combine passwords and biometrics. So instead of typing a password, you may just think about a password, and uh, a sensor on your device will capture your unique brain waves, authenticate you, and unlock. Do all this sound like science fiction? Well, that's what people said 10 years ago when we said that ECGs could replace fingerprints. But one thing is for sure, the security battle will continue. There will always be an arms race between users and hackers, and we will always try to create better authentication systems. Every human being is a walking catalog of infinite biometric signatures, and each one of them is as unique as a snowflake. So as we move forward and this battle continues, it is natural that we will use our inherent biodata to protect our digital data. Thank you.